Hello. Welcome everyone. I hope you're having a great night. I see there are already some of you waiting. Just gonna hang out for a few minutes to make sure that the sound is okay. Uh, so if you are there, please leave a comment just to let me know where you're listening from, if you can hear my voice okay. I'm also going to play a piece um, just to see how the harp sounds. So give me feedback. Oh, and I'm hearing myself on my iPhone, which means surely that some of you can also hear me. That's great. <laughs> okay, um, this is Il est né le divin enfant just as a sound check. Great. There are tons of you here. Thank you. Listening from St. Paul, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Minnetonka, Fridley. Wow. Indianapolis. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, does the harp sound okay? It's not too loud. I guess harp isn't accused very often of being too loud. <laughs> I do remember when I was in um, college at the University of Minnesota, I had a little lap harp that I brought into my dorm for about a month and I would play it. And I definitely had the hall monitor knock on my door and tell me I was being too loud <laughs> late at night to stop playing, which was funny to me. Good, okay, thank you for feedback about sound. Yay, people from Washington. Roseville, Badness Heights, <laughs> thanks. All right, hey, it's after seven, so we can officially start. Um, it's gonna just be pretty casual, or I'm gonna try keep it casual tonight. To, it's just kind of a mix of some more modern tunes for Christmas and some things that might feel obscure, but that's always what my concerts end up being. So I hope you enjoy. This first piece is just a Christmas waltz um, by, oh, I believe it's Julie Stein. I think I have a typo on my music there. Okay, here we go.
go. I'm also curious to know what you all are doing while you listen. Of course, if you are just sitting and listening, that's lovely. Um, but I'm wondering if you are working on any present wrapping, baking, knitting, assorted activities. Just feel free to comment that at any, any time. Uh, all right, so I wanted to play some music from my Christmas CD. Um, so this next piece is Bring a Torch, Jeanette Isabella. And this is always one that I've never quite known what it was about. Who is Jeanette Isabella and why is she bringing a torch? So I was reading the, the words and I feel like to sum it up, it's saying, Jesus is here. Let's go look, and you should come too. This is an exciting event, uh, and it's an exciting piece, another waltz, actually. The chorus includes the text, beautiful is the mother, beautiful is the child. Have your comments a little bit larger on my phone so that's why I'm checking down here enjoying a snack and music Christmas shopping yes that's good Ooh, baking a pumpkin pie I like it 
Yay. I'm glad to be part of your evening. Uh, all right. I am going to play for you a non-Christmas carol. And this was actually a request from Urs in Switzerland. I'm not sure if I pronounced your name correctly, so I apologize. And um, you can correct me in the comments uh, if it's not right. But this is Contiga 384, the monk who wrote Mary's name in three colors. And I just love this image. Um, the colors are rose, gold, and blue. And I played this on my last concert, but I just, I'm kind of enamored with it. So I'm going to play it again. <laughs> and I did a YouTube video of this this summer with my friend Brittany. And so when I'm playing this, I always hear her percussion parts in the back of my head. I forgot to mention that this one was often a pilgrim song. I should say all the cantigas were sung often by pilgrims as they were on their pilgrimages. And uh, for that reason, I decided to play next, I Wonder As I Wander, speaking of walking places. And this is an American carol, and it was actually, it's kind of, weird. It was collected in 1933. I just learned in North Carolina. And then John Jacob Niles took the portions of, of melody that he had collected and then wrote the piece that we now know as I wonder, as I wander. And I always wonder how much was um, the original and how much he added. It's a little bit of a mystery, I think. So, um, I wonder as I wander. <laughs>
going to check some comments. I can see them out of the corner of my eye coming in. <laughs> hmm. I'm saying, hearing that some people have a delay. I don't have a, any effects on with my software this time around, but my harp is ringing like crazy. Uh, I think other harpists will have noticed that the harp can sound different depending on the weather, and it's just like on my end anyway. It's very vocal tonight, <laughs> so I apologize if that's causing any echoing on your side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play another one from my Christmas album. This is the Holly and the Ivy, which is just super fun. And I'm playing it in a medley with Masters in the Hall, which is one that doesn't get as much attention, I think. Another one from my Christmas book this year. Just check. Oh, someone's favorite Christmas carol. Emerson, I think I knew that. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll just comment that those are my own arrangements, and I played them for my Christmas CD, which I think I recorded in 2015. 
So um, when you're doing your own arrangements, I feel like it's much easier to include all the fancy things because you've just spent time with it. Um, not that that means you don't make mistakes still. That's part of being a performer. <laughs> so this next medley is Green Groweth the Holly, followed by God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. And again, I looked up the words to Green Groweth the Holly because I felt like I didn't know what it was about. And it was apparently written, both the music and the words, by Henry VIII. Uh, and the first verse, I'll just read it to you, says, Green groweth the holly, so doth the ivy. Though winter blasts blow ne'er so high, green groweth the holly. So it's kind of a hopeful, hopeful thing. Despite the winter wind, the holly and the ivy are still growing. They're still alive. Uh, and I wanted also to include God Rest You Merry Gentlemen in this program because of the rest of the verse where it says, Let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Uh, and that, to me, is an encouraging thought. So, here we go. <laughs> wanted to play a piece for you that is not done. Uh, I have had a lot of extra time to practice over this summer, which has actually been quite lovely. And I've been working through a book of Bach preludes that have been transcribed for the harp. And it's just been so fun. They're like puzzles that you need to sort of work your way through and untangle and get your fingers to agree with. Uh, so I discovered this one a month ago. So it's really fresh, but I just love it. 
and I'm going to play it for you, and there will be mistakes, but that's okay. Uh, I, oh, well, okay, um, this is Prelude number 21 in B-flat major, and um, the very first time I sight read through it, I wrote on the paper the most sublime music ever, because it just touched me somewhere in here, which was super fun. So um, I'm going to play it for you at the tempo that's at right now. And I was also reading a paper online about kind of the origins of preludes and the idea that they sort of evolved from just a musician warming up on stage or playing arpeggios and scales just to see if their instrument is in tune. So they have a very free form. They can be kind of whatever you want them to be. And so I'm taking that to heart for this prelude. There you go. Thank you for listening. And I don't know, maybe I'll never have it be any faster. I kind of like it slower so you can hear the notes. This next piece was recommended to me by a friend and a student, John, who said that he thought what sweeter music by John Rutter might sound lovely on solo harp and it was originally written for choir. And so I had the best time kind of sorting through the music and um, adapting it because a choir, of course, can sustain a note forever if they're staggering their breathing. Um, but they can also stop whenever they want to, unlike the harp, which just keeps ringing. So it was fun to kind of sort through what notes to keep and which ones to get rid of. It was kind of hard choice, but I've been playing this every day for weeks now and I just love it. So I hope you enjoy it as well.
think I'll take a moment and look at your comments. Thank you. Somebody asked what my primary instrument is, lever or pedal harp, and I do both, kind of depending on my mood. I switch back and forth. <laughs> this next set includes Deck the Halls, and I feel like I've noticed a lot more people putting up Christmas decorations in their yards. I, I don't know if you guys have noticed that in your area, but my street basically has well, I'd say 25% more Christmas decorations than in a usual year. Uh, and when you're home, you just have time to deck your halls. What else are you gonna do? So, uh, and I was thinking about parties as I was arranging this piece and thinking what my ideal party, not that I'm gonna have one this year, um, but one can dream. What would be my ideal party? And I thought I'm a Regency ball with dancing and costumes and all of that stuff. So I am including in this set some music from the 2005 Keira Knightley Pride and Prejudice movie. This is Meriton Town Hall, and it's from the first ball scene, basically. And it was apparently based on music by Henry Purcell. And I'm desperately in search of the title of that original piece by Henry Purcell, because I want to know how much of it is him and how much of it is Dario Marianelli the composer of the soundtrack for the movie. So uh, if you know, please comment. Or if you have friends who you think might know, ask them on my behalf, please. Hmm. I'll play uh, them back to back. <laughs> the ball is over. Everyone is so warm. All the young people have thrown open the windows, of course, and you have to go home. And so you leave the ballroom or the community hall or wherever you are, and you step out into the cold night of winter. And it's the best feeling for about 10 minutes until you start being freezing cold and you still are not home yet. So I'm going to play next the Shetland tune, Cold Nights of Winter, and I'm following it by Sleep Sound in the Morning, which is an activity that is guaranteed after a ball, of course. And these are both from my new 
a relatively new Celtic album. Cold Nights of Winter, followed by Sleep Sound in the Morning. <laughs> if you ever have a Regency party, I'm inviting myself. Yes, the more, the merrier. <laughs> Thank you for your lovely comments. Uh, all right, so I'm going to play another piece that was requested. This is What Wondrous Love Is This. It's not quite a Christmas piece. It's more an Easter piece but they're related, so I'm gonna play it for you anyway. This is an American hymn. Um, it was originally a shape note tune. Uh, if you have questions about that, ask me, because I love talking about it. Uh, arranged by me.
Okay. The next one is new to me. I've had it in my folder to arrange for years and I've just never gotten around to it. And um, this December, by the way, it's been so fun to actually work on arranging new Christmas music in December. Because usually by December, I'm just next, you know, next Wednesday I have this rehearsal and next Friday I have that performance and then Saturday and then, and there's no time for creative work in December. So this has been kind of a fun, uh, in some ways fun sabbatical. <laughs> Uh, so this is Do You Hear What I Hear? And the fun thing about it is that it was written during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And it's so interesting because I know I've, I've studied it in school. I know it was a very scary time for people all over the world, I'm sure. Um, and this beautiful piece came out of that time. And so I just have faith that in the moment that we're in, beautiful things are coming out of this time also. And I know we can see them, some of them now, but I know we'll see a lot of them years down the road also. So, uh, do you hear what I hear? And I'm putting Little Drummer Boy in here as well, in the middle. We're getting to the end here. 
This next piece is Angels We Have Heard on High. And I've long wanted to do an arrangement that I could just play with a choir if they're singing kind of the traditional hymn book version of Angels We Have Heard on High because I love the harmonies of this particular one. I'm an alto, so I'm always um, a little bit irritated when I'm in sing-alongs and whoever's leading has updated the harmonies and so my traditional alto part no longer cooperates with the instruments. <laughs> Uh, so this version, in theory, you should be able to sing along with um, the traditional, uh, well, obviously soprano, but all the other parts as well, uh, for the first two verses. Third verse, I got a little fancy, but I didn't change any of the chords. So sing at your pleasure if you'd like to, and let us know if you're singing. <laughs> There's a little intro by me. singing. <laughs> Alto. Yes. Nice. All right. So I have two pieces left to play for you. And I, I do want to just say thank you to everybody who chose to spend their evening um, listening to my music. I love it. And uh, I will go back and read all your comments because I can't quite get them all right now but I'll see him later. So I'm gonna finish with a request that um, came in. My friends Tim and Jess had asked if I would play I Saw Three Ships 
And it kind of made me laugh because my Bible study usually goes Christmas caroling on normal years. And Tim always wants to sing all 10 verses of I Saw Three Ships. And we always veto him, except for one time where we did sing them all for a very patient man. Um, and then we never did it again. So I thought I would try and arrange an interesting version of all 10 verses of I Saw Three Ships. And it does go pretty quick. It's about two and a half minutes long. And I'm going to finish up with uh, We Wish You a Merry Christmas because I do wish you a very Merry Christmas and um, that you would experience all the peace that goes with um, Christmas and joy wherever you are, whatever you're doing, um, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, just this holiday time. Uh, okay, I saw three ships. That's us knocking on the door. That's the pitch pipe. Christmas, and thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful evening.